Okay, this morning we've been working a bunch of miscellaneous fats, uh, uh, clearing things out, making some space, although we have lots and lots of empty vats right now. But we're trying to get through everything uh, in order to find out what we have left and had a pleasant surprise this morning. Susie doesn't know this because uh, uh, she was working in Greenhouse 2 and I'm in Greenhouse 1. We have uh, several convicts that survived and a Carpentus. This is a uh, Herichthys Carpentus, a nice big male. Uh, I'm going to set him aside. I've got seven other Carpentus, uh, so I, uh, I'm sure we can find a pair. Also, I saw yesterday in Greenhouse 2 in the sun, I saw a huge male and a big female pair, uh, obviously paired up. So, They'll spawn. We'll get a bunch of carpentas in the sump because there's not a lot of predatory fish in two. Most of the cichlids in two died. Uh, so uh, they're all, you know, they'll have probably three or four hundred offspring uh, when they spawn. Okay, uh, the other surprise other than convicts was one little Cichlosoma salvini. It was in a vat next to a miscellaneous vat, and all the other Salvinis in there didn't make it. Uh, I'm hopeful that since it did, that some there were a bunch of Salvinis in the sumps, so I'm hoping that we have some there. If not, I'll grow it up, see what it is, and, and get it a mate. Okay, convicts. No pinks. Uh, the, by the way, where these fish were, and the reason these survived is they were in a miscellaneous vat where we just kind of chunk in uh, odds and ends, uh, some some fish, just whatever uh, didn't fit, uh, got chunked in there. And I was going through it, separating out uh, peacock-like fish from anguna-like fish, some really nice uh, fish in there, and I found these convicts. And the reason I think they survived is that vat in Greenhouse 1 uh, had well water flowing into it during the storm. It didn't flow all the time because we, uh, the first time we had a power outage, which lasted almost six hours, uh, the well froze up. After that, we made sure the well was on the generator after we got it working again. And uh, so whenever we had commercial power, which is not very often, the well was running, but it was also running on the generator. Uh, so enough uh, 73 degree well water uh, went into that 55 gallon vat to, uh, to save these convicts. Uh, some big males. This guy is chopped up pretty badly, probably from that big Carpentus male. Another one also chopped up. An interesting male, and he's not as chopped up. Another male really picked on badly. Nice male. I like him. He's got a lot of blue on him. I'm going to see if I can get a female for him. Another interesting young male. Oh, I'm sorry. Interesting young male with a little bit of blue on him. The male convicts are not as colorful as the females. Okay, that's a young female. See, I'll put her over here with the rest of these. I think are females. Not very good color on that one. That's another male. Where is it? The colors say female. That's a female. 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 Two females. And a female. Now what I'm going to do I've got those two kind of bluish males I like, and three big males, and several females. 
He looks like a total of five, six males, and I've got a few more females in that. I'm, so I'm going to set the, we've got the tanks, uh, bat space, so I'm going to set them up for breeding. Now I'm hoping we get some pinks out of this. Now you may ask how that would happen since none of these are pink. Well, in convicts, the pink body color is a recessive allele, uh, commonly called gene, but the, the gene is the, uh, the segment of DNA that codes for uh, melanin, and pink is a uh, defective melanin gene, uh, a, a, an allele. So we have the wild allele, which codes for the black uh, convicts, and then the uh, uh, pink allele that codes for uh, a non-black. The in order to be pink, you have to have two copies of that gene, one on each chromosome that you've inherited from your parents. And so I'm hoping that somebody in here, care, um, at least one male and one female, carries uh, the recessive for pink, and we'll recapture that. Uh, we've lost, apparently, the uh, platinum strain of convicts, which was separate, and I don't... I, I was working on uh, the genetics of that, and I don't think it's uh, uh, related to pink and, and black at all. I think it's a different gene. At any rate, uh, let me show you how this works on this cool marker board here. I'm going to do a Punnett square, if I can get the cap off the, okay. And this, we're only dealing with one gene and two alleles here. So I'm just going to do a four cell grid. This is going to be the male gametes and the female gametes. Let's assume that we have a uh, black male and a black female, and that the female, uh, that they are, are both heterozygous uh, for uh, pink. So this is typically the wild gene or the normal gene is shown as an, uh, just a plus. And uh, we're going to call this uh, little letter P for pink. And so the male produces two types of sperm. Uh, half of the sperm are going to have uh, the wild uh, gene that codes for black, and half are going to have the gene that codes for pink. And the same thing on the female. And just to tell what ratio you're going to get, and you're going to make people seasick with this season. So let's wait a second. Okay. Uh, so this egg, this egg is fertilized by that sperm, so it's going to uh, be genetically uh, two blacks, two wilds. This one's going to be black with a pink recessive. Same thing up here. This one is the interesting one because it is homozygous for pink, the recessive pink. So if you look at this, uh, if you have a male and a female that are heterozygous for, uh, for pink, you would expect three to one wild to pink offspring. So about 25%. Now that, that's uh, statistically over a large number of matings, that's what happens. Typically it's fairly close. Now let's assume that we have a male that is homozygous for wild and a, a female that is uh, heterozygous for pink. In that case, we get that. She produced half of her eggs are going to have the, the allele for pink, but all of the male's sperm are going to be uh, for the wild coloration. So you're going to, you're going to get 100% uh, wilds or blacks, and you're not going to know that you have any pinks. Now, what happens if you have a pink male and made it to a, uh, a heterozygous female? Oops, I'm getting this wet so it doesn't work so well. <laughs> okay, well, I got the board wet. Uh, at any rate, what happens uh, in, in that case is half the 
my uh well, Maya's blocking the board and it's gotten wet anyway. I'm going to have to figure out some way of preventing that. Uh, once you zoom back, see. Uh, so in that case, you would get 50% uh, uh, pinks. Uh, if you make two pinks together, you're going to get all pinks. Okay, I'm going to set these breeders up and uh, uh, find home for the Carpenthus and the Salvini. Good fish keeping. <laughs>